it would have less of an impact to add more townhouses, less single family homes. Maybe this straight swap of single family homes turns into townhouses. I'm glad to see that you add the townhouses down at the corner of 202 and, um, and uh, 926, that's fantastic. Um, but I just wish you would push it over and add more townhouses and get rid of the single family homes. Thank you.
So if you're referring to the July, um, the letter that I put out that was revised July 6th, this was the merging of two previous documents. So the first half of the document was an update of technical reviews that had been previously completed and the status. And as I outlined earlier, the significant items that were still outstanding were relative to site distance at the accesses and the capacity analysis of 926 and New Street, in my opinion. Um, Nicole has offered a different, different opinion. Um, the second half of that letter, um, back in May, I was asked to make a recommendation, um, sort of a listing of what transportation improvements the Planning Commission should consider. Um, and some of those things have been outlined in the exhibits that Toll Brothers has provided. Um, so that letter was updating the recommended improvements relative to um, what's been provided. Okay, uh, interestingly, I'm, I'm using the same microphone that Cole used. <laughs> Um, at, at the moment, the, um, my recommendation is that was at the bottom of, well, in the middle of page five, is that they have not met, in my opinion, their demonstration of proof. Um, and then what went on after that is just where they were in the Required or the improvements that I recommend that be considered if it does end up being recommended for approval. Some of the historical items on here. The paragraph 21, guys, that 
the historical commission wanted told to agree that the entire property would be subject to an archaeological survey. Um, and so 21 I updated to be consistent with what the historical commission's recommendation was. So I didn't know if anyone had any issues with the, with the way that would work. That pretty much mirrors the historical commission acts. That's 21. No issues? No comments? Okay. Um, the one thing, sticking with the historical commission, if you go to the page 12, number 47 at the bottom, this I did not change and based on historical commission recommendation only because when you look at the photographs of these, and also I think there was discussion by Cole about the condition that the scale house and the corn crib, the, the historical commission wanted it that Applicant has to relocate the scale house and the scale pad from its present location to a location near the equestrian barn. And they also wanted them to relocate the corn crib from its location near the main house to a condition closer to the old barn. Um, and I think originally you guys said you were not willing to do that, you were afraid they were going to crumble. Is that still your position? So I don't know if you want, I did not change 47 to be with the historic commission line only in light of, if you look at the photographs, it, it, it don't seem like they're in very good shape that they really could logically be re relocated. But that's a decision for you if you want to change 47. I'd like to change it because I think we should respect the opinion of the historical commission on these features. Okay. I agree as well. I agree also. Okay, so the language that's in my comment is really how 47 would read that. Yes. Okay. Those are the only things that I have questions on. Everything else is the conditions that we went through. I did update I did update the letter to reference the supplemental materials. This is Jack's suggestion, I think it was a great suggestion. So attached as an exhibit to the letter is all the supplemental plans, including the plans before you tonight. It's basically revised alternate plans to they change the configuration of these intersections, the 90 degree angle one. So that's referenced. I know that Jack wanted the board supervisors to understand all the different materials that you were reviewing throughout the course of this process of reviewing the alternate plan. And, and I'll just make two comments. Sure. So, so just real quickly, I think there's two additional reasons that need to be included for denial. Uh, the first would be that um, the plan from presented to us is not in complete compliance with the comprehensive um, uh, plan for the township, which, which was updated in 2019. And then secondly, uh, as far as I can tell, we haven't received a review letter from Chester Planning, Camp Planning Commission on the revised uh, uh, plan. Well, I think it's important that they should have the opportunity to review it and have had their comments and thoughts. You get to that, so you can't. That's what that would have been a township thing to do. I don't know if they submitted one on the. I thought the applicant had it submitted. No. Thank you. 
The motion, the, the last couple meetings we went over the proposed conditions. The beginning of the letter is the Planning Commission's recommendation that the board deny the conditional use. And Mr. Emmett has made it to his point, and he had a majority of the board that agreed that the Planning Commission believes that they have not met their requirements under Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, which is the Environmental Rights Amendment. So that would be the first basis to deny. That they have not submitted sufficient information to demonstrate that they are not going to impact the environment based on that constitutional amendment. The second basis of denial is what Al concluded in his letter of July 6th, and that is specific to the conditional use criteria relating to traffic. Based on his July 6th letter, he still believes that there are, they have not met their burden of that one particular condition. So those are the two bases of denial that are in this draft letter. The way I understand Kevin's comment was to add a, another basis to the extent that we can cite specific provisions in the, number one, the zoning ordinance that pulls in the comprehensive plan, and two, the comprehensive plan. So that would be something I would actually like to supplement that and have you specifically look at that maybe at a later, later time. Um, I just don't want to... I'd like that to be a separate letter. Okay. Um, and then the rest, and then the letter goes on to say that in the event that the board disagrees that the Environmental Rights Amendment can be used because there's case law that Mr. Edelman has cited that the courts have not yet held that the Environmental Rights Amendment can be a basis to deny a conditional use. So we recognize that if the, if the board of supervisors doesn't go down that route and if the applicant presents more information regarding the traffic, and therefore the board feels that by law they're entitled to the conditional use, this, this letter then has 47 proposed conditions, which is what the Planning Commission spent their last couple meetings going over. Those the conditions that have been revised since the last meeting are the ones we talked about tonight. They would incorporate this alternative plan that changes the geometry of the two intersections, and it incorporates the Historical Commission's recommendations. So that's basically a summary of what this letter is. If the board approves this letter as a recommendation, we will make sure that it gets put up onto the website, and it will it will be submitted as a piece of evidence at the conditional use hearings. Good. Anyone? Any other comments? Motion on the floor. Yeah, we have some. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No opposed? Okay. Recommendations as written will be submitted. Thank you. And thanks everyone for 
Sharing with it. Back here? What'd you say? Still awake back here? Yes. Hard to sleep. Thank you, Nicole. Right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> 